No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. Ship Says No More is the initiative here on campus to let everyone know that we are working to end sexual assault and domestic violence. One of the things we discovered is so many people cared about this issue, but not very many people had a way to express it. So we came up with the Ship Says No More program. It was inspired by the National Program and the PA Says No More program. It also gave us a website where all of our information is at. So students have a one-stop area they can go to learn about reporting, to learn about um, who to talk to, who can help them. Students can report acts of misconduct to the Dean of Students Office, Campus Police, or the Office of Social Equity. Confidential resources include the Women's Center, Counseling Center, and Spiritual Center. We're here to help them understand their options and their resources and then support the decision that they make. So we would never tell them what to do. We're here to help them once they've decided what to do and to give them the information they need to make the best decision for themselves. So one of the things that we do when we educate is to make sure that students understand that they can be an engaged bystander. They don't have to stand by and let something happen. We try to give them some tools on here's a website, here's um, information on a card, the ship says no more cards, here's the person you would call, and engage everyone in this effort. I'm Dr. Lovett. I'm the Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and the Dean of Students here at Shippensburg University. In the office proper, what we can offer a student is uh, no contact. So we can put together a no contact order between a respondent and a complainant. So if a student comes to us and said, you know what, Dr. Lovett, I'm just not comfortable with student X um, living in the same residence hall where I live. Could I move to another building? Um, I'm in some classes with student X. Could you help me find a way to either get out of that class or have that person removed from the class? And the answer to all those is yes. We have a great relationship with the University Police in terms of reporting, and then we try to get them either to the Health Center, Counseling Center, um, Women's Center. Uh, I'm involved in some of the judicial processes. So as cases come in, I look at them, I will either send them forward as a Title IX case to be adjudicated by a judicial board, or we'll have a hearing simply as a case that needs to be heard by a board or an individual that needs to be adjudicated and a sanction given. If you do not want to go through the judicial process, we may have to go through the judicial process for a number of different reasons. We think that the, what happened was egregious enough that we should keep that from happening again to another student. Or we may have information that, lets, that allows us uh, to want to go forward with the case because this is not the first person that the respondent has interacted with uh, where we're getting a similar story of an outcome. We try to help them understand uh, the gravity of what's happened to them and try to help them make a decision that's right for them. I oversee um, the, the process for uh, addressing and adjudicating uh, incidents of student misconduct on our campus. I usually see students after one of the worst experiences that they've had at college. A lot of times they're vulnerable at that point. I don't know that, that I've seen very many of the cases that I've handled that don't involve alcohol uh, or other drugs. So are you, are you engaging in safe behavior that way so that you are always in control of your thoughts and your strength and your decision making and that you have uh, support around you if you're not with people that you trust. And I think that, you know, bystander intervention is very important. I was, for example, coming, coming home late one night, I had returned from a conference and I, I was filling up the state car at the gas station on King Street and there were so many students out on Queen Street. 
but I observed one couple and they were, I don't know if they were in a sprinkler or what, but it was clear to me that the woman was soaking wet, she couldn't stay on her feet, and the male was shoving her and she was resisting him. Now, it could have been horseplay, but I heard her, her yelling, you know, in resistance to him, but he, he wasn't stopping. So initially, I used my voice because I'm still at the pump with the hose in my car um, to yell, hey, you know, you cut that out. Uh, after I finished pumping the gas, I got in the car and I drove up to the car wash and there was a, a local police officer sitting there and I explained the whole situation to her and she went right over and talked with them. I'm a grown woman, you know, and I've got years of professional experience. It still was somewhat uncomfortable for me. Um, so I can imagine that for students, uh, it would be a daunting task to do it, but I think with some training, some bystander intervention training, uh, I think that it could happen. I think that the culture of the campus needs to be changed. Um, so that students would feel comfortable knowing that they're doing a good thing for the community. Although Shippensburg University offers a variety of services, there are other resources available off campus. So it is the Domestic Violence and Rape Crisis Center for Franklin and Fulton counties. So we offer all kinds of services to any victim of domestic or sexual violence. So on this side of the building is all administrative offices. Uh, we do like our counseling here. We help out for protection from abuse orders over here. Mm -hmm. Like all of the, the community services as well as the nitty gritty things uh, like financial. And then on the other part of our building is actually a emergency shelter for individuals who are trying to escape domestic violence. Uh, by, the bystander effect is probably probably going to be the most effective way of stopping domestic and sexual violence. I can go out and speak my head off and it's not really going to make a difference. But the fact that there are other people in the community who take it upon themselves to, you know, I'm in a bar and I see someone that is putting a drug in someone's drink. I step in and intervene. That's going to stop a sexual assault from happening. And if I do that every single time I see something or if someone just steps in whenever they see something happening, we're really going to reduce domestic and sexual violence that way. Really the idea of everything that we do, the philosophy behind what we do, is to really help victims and survivors take their life back. You know, you've been in a relationship or in a situation where you've had all power and control taken away from you. We try to get that back. So all of the YWCAs are part of a national YWCA. So all of our missions are the same, which is the elimination of, or of, the elimination of racism and the empowerment of women and girls. And so through that, sort of naturally what fits under there is our sexual assault program. So that serves people of all genders and across the lifespan. And the things that we offer through that program are access to a 24-hour crisis hotline. We offer individual counseling services, group counseling services, and that can happen in a couple of different ways. So our main office is in Carlisle, but we also offer those things to our college campuses in ways that are more convenient for them. So I think that there are two different ways that bystanders can approach things. So you can do things reactively and you can do things proactively. So reactively means recognizing that you're in a situation where you might be able to intervene or to help somebody in need and responding then. So that's going and checking in with your friend at a party when they're being isolated by somebody where they seem uncomfortable when they're talking to somebody. The other thing that you can do sort of is more proactive. So that's doing things like creating the culture that we want to have on campus to say violence isn't going to be tolerated here. So that means that I might tell my friends when I'm uncomfortable when somebody tells a racist or sexist joke. So many of our victims and people who are disclosing something for the very first time or to somebody new for the very first time um, experience things that have to do with disbelief and make people question what happened to them or um, sort of deny their experience. And so the most important thing somebody can say is, I believe you. Well, I believe students are certainly more aware of what the No More campaign's about. 
Uh, we've done a great job, I think, our Women's Center and others, our Women's Studies program, uh, and various individuals across campus have done such a great job in getting the word out. Uh, we've done a lot of training around the issue of uh, sexual assault and harassment on campus. People are, I think, more comfortable in confronting behavior that they're 